Today we have Motorcycle for the Atari 7800. It's a terrible pun, but you know, originally this was going to come out as Super Stunt Cycle. An allusion to a 70s game they did as a dedicated console called just simply Stunt Cycle. Now I actually wound up with two copies of this game because I bought a complete PAL copy off of eBay not realizing it would be incompatible with my 7800. So I later bought the American release uh, cartridge only and so now I have a complete uh, motorcycle and as far as I can tell the packaging on the PAL one is exactly the same it even says Sunnyvale on it. Hang on for your life the box says. Well. I don't know if you want to remind people of uh, the Sega game, that's uh, some stiff competition, but uh, let's bust open the manual and see what we're getting ourselves into here. It says the annual motorcycle competition for deranged, psychopathic, and other unusual biker types is this weekend. They really uh, stuck with the uh, psycho theme here which would uh, be pretty unthinkably uh, unpolitically correct these days. It goes on, four different tracks will separate the veterans from the rookies, or the schizophrenics from the psychotics. Yeah, um, oh, anyway, uh, let's uh, boot the game up and see what uh, it's all about. So it's a nice title screen, but you're treated to some pretty awful music, courtesy of the Tia which uh, is the chip in the Atari 2600 that Atari insisted on using again for the 7800 and it can't really do music. It's really one of the worst decisions Atari made when designing this thing, which is otherwise a quite capable system as you're going to see in a second. So what you have here are four possible tracks and the first one looks like an oval but it's all full of hills and other hazards as are all the courses. So as you can see, Motorcycle is a traditional back view bike game, kind of like Hang On. But this game differentiates itself in several important ways. The most obvious being an emphasis on stunts. You can not only launch your bike off of hills and ramps, but you can also bunny hop at will jumping over other bikes. Pulling off stunts increases your score, including score awarded for airtime. And after each race, you're also awarded points based on how many bikes you've passed. Yeah, give me those sweet points. Of course, completing laps in the time limit should be your highest priority because crossing the finish line extends your time. So the game strikes a good balance of racing technique and judging when to pull off stunts when it's not too risky. Another smart thing about Motorcycle is that you can customize the controls. You can customize how long it takes to lean into a turn and how long it takes to lean out of a turn. And that's great because you don't have an analog controller. I really wish other racing games from this era allowed you to customize it that way. In fact, there's a lot that this game does really well that other games from the time fail to do. For one, I find the courses to all be fairly memorable. While the scenery is just varying shades of brown pretty much, I find the configuration of curves and hills to be fairly distinct. This is something I mostly associate with real 3D games like Daytona USA, and so it's pretty striking that they were able to pull all that off with such a limited graphics engine. And the graphics engine itself is done quite well with all kinds of hills and valleys to drive over like a maniac. Then the game has nice big sprite work, very detailed, and I love the uh, flare from the exhaust pipe when you shift gears. You know it's funny, I just got GP1 Part 2 for the Super Nintendo and even in that game the bikes look small and puny compared to Motorcycle on the 8-bit uh, Atari 7800. And another thing the game gets right is the curves feel really good. There's no inertia so it's much tighter controlling than a game like say Super Cycle for the Commodore 64. And when you're turning into the curve, it just feels really natural. You know, the curve is the steepness that you'd expect it to be when it's coming up on the screen. The game also makes you work the gear shift. You have to flip to low gear as you enter the curve and flip to high gear as you floor it out of it. You can't just cruise around in high gear the whole time and expect not to crash. 
I really like the finesse that this game demands from the player. And speaking of demanding, this game really is. If you can finish all five laps, it pretty much means that you have mastered that one course. Like in Outrun at the default setting, crashing at all pretty much guarantees that you're not going to be able to beat it. One big difference is that in Outrun it's a lot harder to crash, whereas in this if you so much as tap another motorbike, you go down in flames. So kind of like in pole position, it's really important that you steer clear of traffic. If you have to, it's best to tail an opposing motorbike in low gear and then pass when you have the clear shot. So there's a lot of good thought put into the gameplay of Motorcycle, but the game isn't quite perfect. One thing that really sticks out at me every time I play it is the sound, which is awful. Listen to this. They did the best they could with what they had, but some games on the 7800 had a sound chip installed in the cartridge called a Pokey, and if any game calls for that, then this game certainly does. The worst thing about the sound effects isn't even that they're annoying, it's that the engine sound steps so much in pitch that you can't really use it to judge how fast you're going. And even putting that aside, imagine if this game had music. But sadly, that was not to be. That was the uh, Master System sound chip a second ago, by the way. And the one last thing I have to complain about in Motorcycle is the frame rate. It's not really all that fluid, but it's not all that choppy either. It's just a little bit worse than Super Hang On on the Genesis, but fortunately it manages to remain tight and responsive despite that. And it's something where when I'm in the middle of a race, I don't really notice it. Now, speaking of controllers, you do need a two-button controller for this, so I'd recommend using anything but the stock 7800 Proline joysticks, which are so horrible that they'll drain the fun out of uh, pretty much any game you play them with. You know, you can use that 7800 pad that came out in Europe, or uh, some people, I believe, make adapters so that you can use the Sega Genesis controller on your Atari. So yeah, I think I'd recommend Motorcycle over many other 8-bit motorcycle games, including the Master System Hang-On and Super Cycle for the Commodore. Though as far as 8-bit uh, back view racing games go, I don't think it's quite ready to overthrow, uh, say, uh, Speed Buggy. That game is fantastic, and I don't think Motorcycle quite touches that. Uh, speaking of which, yeah, they're both scoring games. So approach it with that in mind. It's a lot of fun to try to beat your old high scores, even if you can't finish the track completely. Now, I've seen reviews online that accuse Motorcycle of being a reskinning, basically, of Pole Position 2, a game that was the pack-in for the Atari. And I've gotta say, I don't really find that to be the case. I mean, I see where the comparisons are. They're both scoring racing games. They both have four tracks and they both award you passing bonuses. But I've found that Motorcycle has just so much more to it, so much more replayability, and I think it's a lot more fun. And it's possible that because of the name, people were expecting some kind of bike combat game like Road Rash, and they got instead a uh, fairly, uh, you know, less violent, less psycho racing game. All in all, I found this to be a real hidden gem on the Atari 7800. So, as the manual states, rev her up and let her rip. The winner's circle, or the guy with the clean white coat, awaits. Oh, give me a break. <laughs>